So welcome everyone to American TESOL Presents Free Friday Webinars. I am your hostess, Shelly Sanchez Carroll. We have over 150 of these. You can come every Friday, you can bring a friend, or you can show the recording, or download the slides, or even take the bookmarks and share them with your institute. Um, it's absolutely free, and you can get a certificate from American TESOL. So hopefully you'll join us at this time every Friday. And if not, you can always catch the recording. Um, and that's one of the wonderful things about it. Ola said she just got some tea. So you can join us and you can drink your tea. You can even be in your PJs. So it's very uh, good. Today we're going to talk about masking tape. Now I'm an ICT trainer and mobile learning advocate. I always come equipped with my devices. Uh, I even have my iPad mini. So you might wonder, why am I talking about masking tape? Well, there's a very good reason, because I do often use masking tape. Why would I use masking tape? Well, there's a lot of good reasons. And one of them, uh, what I think is one of the most important things, is when you're a teacher, the biggest asset that you can have and the best skill that you can uh, have for yourself is the ability to be flexible and adapt. And the reason why I say that is because there's going to be many times in your career that you're going to have to improvise when things are just not going to go as planned, when what you have already worked hard for and created and everything is just going to mess up. And when that messes up, especially if you're teaching with technology, then you need a backup plan and you need it fast. Uh, because your students, they're not going to be patient. A lot of times they're going to act up. Or your audience, your audience, when you're a presenter, I present all over the world. I've been to 26 countries. Uh, this year, um, if you go to my slide shows, um, I have over 150 different presentations. So for me, it's very important that when something goes wrong, not, even if it's not my fault, I can stand there and say, Oh no, the technology is broken. Instead, I have something um, that's very simple that will work for anything. And what it is, is a teacher survival kit. So I think this is really important for any teacher. When you're teaching, it's important that you have items that you can carry in a bag. You can see my teacher bag with my very cute little studious pug there. Um, and the great thing about masking tape, it's one of the things in my teacher survival kit. So I can put it in here and I can carry it everywhere with me. So what happens when I go to a conference and I have, I was in Istanbul, I was at the ISTEC conference and I was presenting, I was co-presenting with Sue Lyon Jones, who's an amazing instructor um, and teacher trainer as well. And it was funny because we were presenting Plan B what to do when the technology doesn't work. And guess what? Our presentation, um, the, the LCD projector, didn't even work. There wasn't even the internet, because the internet, um, I prepare for that. But they had never prepared, really, that my PowerPoint or my presentation wouldn't even be able to be shown. So at that case in point, what do you do? Well, we didn't cancel it. We continued, and we went on. And so one of the most uh, valuable things that I have in my kit is my, um, my masking tape. And the reason why is because it's, it's kind of damage proof. It's resistant to water. It, you can stick it on a wall. I could actually go and stick this to the wall. And a lot of times, um, you got to watch out because sometimes it will peel the paint. But it, it's actually quite good because you can stick it to things and then you can take it off really easily. So it doesn't really... Uh, damage things as well. Um, the great thing is that you can color on it, you can write on it. Um, I mean, there's so many things that you can do with masking tape. Um, and so it's one of those tools, and it's cheap. It's not very expensive, and it's light. You can carry it, and you don't have to worry um, about it getting so damaged. Now, after a while, you might have to replace it. If you don't use it for a while, sometimes the, the, the tape might get sticky as well. It's not very pretty, but it's very practical and easy and, and to use. Um, the other thing is it's easy to set up. So if something doesn't work and you're thinking of a plan B, you can say, look, OK, Nick, the other plan, but don't worry. I have something prepared for you. Um, you have no scissors required. You can just rip it off. Um, so it, it, it's 
um, very, um, you can, I mean, there's, so there's a lot of things, and then you can just tell your students, hey, this is the activity, and this is what we're going to do. So I already talked about some of the benefits, but these are uh, some of the benefits in case you didn't understand me or you couldn't hear it. Uh, if you miss any of the activities I'm about to share with you, you can always go to this bit.ly address. In a little bit, I'm going to come and I'm going to, uh, to <laughs> you're, you're going to go ahead and you're going to be able to find the resources there if you go to the bit.elt link um, and you can find them for everything else. So we're going to go ahead and start with some of the activities. You can use it for any age group as well. Uh, one of the things you can do with it is you can assess. It's great for assessment. You can assess basic understanding or review vocabulary. So this is when um, you walk into the class and let's say you did you share, um, different vocabulary, flashcards, anything like that. So how do we review basic understanding or vocabulary? If you work, one of the things I've done, and uh, Ed, you'll see yourself here, so <laughs> is you can do this really quick activity. It works for young learners. Um, you can also, you can, you can use it with adults I'm using it here for the teacher training. So all you simply do is you take your masking tape, you put a line on the ground, and it opens you up to so many different possibilities with games. And one of the games is jump to the left or jump to the right, okay? And this is great for working with young learners as well because you can make it as simple, difficult as you want. You can say jump to the left if you are happy, okay? So you're doing emotions. Jump to the left if you are hungry. Jump to the right if you are sad. Um, and then you can have them jump back and forth. So it's also an activity that leads to movement. And then you can make it more difficult. Jump to the, you can build up. Jump to the left if you are wearing blue, if you are wearing something soft, if you're wearing dark colors, if you're dressed for winter. So you can do that. Um, you can do it as also an introduction game. Let's say that you want an icebreaker where your students want to meet each other and you want them to learn more about each other. Then you can use things. Jump to the left if you like ice cream. Jump to the right now if you if your favorite ice cream is chocolate and then you can have them um, turn around and they can talk to each other and they can say they can have a 30 second conversation a minute conversation of why this is their favorites and they can talk about favorites afterwards so there's a lot of flexibility to go with this topic now let's say you want to do something with higher level thinking skills where you want it more critical thinking well, you, what you can do is, um, instead of doing something where, this is what it looks like when you have them have that period where they turn around and they, they look at each other and they can talk to each other. So that's a very co important component or follow-up to this activity because then they get to share with each other. And you can make it very difficult as well. You can um, do something that, it depends on your questions. That's what's great about this kind of activity. Um, so turn it around and instead ask the question, uh, turn, jump to the left if you believe in the death penalty. Jump to the right if you think that, um, uh, if you think Obama's health care is good. So you can see how automatically when they start facing each other, um, they can have those debates with each other. And I've had this happen, and it's very important that when you come to this um, debate, when you have your students debate, and you do this with adult students, that you begin by letting them know we're going to have a responsible debate, okay? And, and um, you can curate it to where it's like this, because when I've had teenagers do this, they get really gun ho they, they start kind of almost getting angry with each other and start saying, oh, um, how could you believe that? And they get so upset. Make it to their issues. Um, you can say something like, jump to the left if you think that um, we should have a dress code. Jump, or what, you know, you think a dress code would be great to jump to the right if you think we should be able to use cell phones for learning. So you can do it according to the age group. Um, if you have older students, you might do something about Social Security. If you have young learners, you might. Um, now, if you have very, very little kids, then you want to leave it simple. You want to leave it to the favorites and colors. Um, the great thing about it is when you do this and you debate your position, what I tend 
to do is I give 30 seconds on one side, and I say, okay, you say all your reasons. Now you have to support your beliefs. You have to say why you believe that Obama's health care is going to lead to something great. And so they go, and they have to face each other. Sorry, I didn't have a picture where they faced each other um, at the point. And there, are you again? You're my model today, Ed. <laughs> um, and then they can, and then I have them um, 30 seconds to the other. Okay, now you give your rebuttal. And you can use different terminology like this, and they can learn the art and rules of debate. So that's just one of the uh, activities that you can do. And all you had to do was put your masking tape to make a line. That's it. Very easy. Uh, when you work with very young learners, you can review numbers. You can do things like hot scotch. Um, you can even add it all in what you add. And the great thing about it is now you can buy masking tape because it's so popular now. You can buy it in all sorts of colors and shapes and sizes, and even it's decorated. It gets a little bit more expensive when you do that, but it makes it a little bit more fun. You can do something like an activity like, who am I? Okay, so you tape the vocabulary. Uh, there's a lovely uh, mafia. <laughs> um, and you can tape vocabulary words to the back. Um, you don't have to tape a little uh, sheet of paper, but the good thing is that uh, when you tape masking tape, the other thing is if you don't have labels or something, um, then what you can do is you can go and you can, oh, Peggy, that's a great idea. Peggy says you can use the color tape for book binding. You know what you could also use it for? If you give it to the kids in different patterns, they can decorate the tops of their textbook. And we used to love doing that when we were little. The great thing is you can stick it to clothes, and it's not going to damage them. A lot of times safety pins will, um, or when you pin something. So you can use it for name tags as well. Um, when you have a group of learners, uh, you can do something where you can just do it, and you can tape it to the back, and they don't have to have the little piece of paper. I had the piece of paper here. Uh, but this is when, after they learn something, like maybe they learn professions, uh, maybe they learn about animals, maybe they learn about uh, cars has a different category, uh, travel, transportation, and you tape it to the back, and the student has to figure out what they are. So it's the simple the yes and no game. And they figure it out by asking questions. So you tape to the back. For example, Masi is taping it to your lovely, beautiful and maybe taping that she's a cow, OK? She's not a cow. She's a gorgeous little girl. Um, <laughs> and then so. Um, so she would turn around and she would ask questions. She would say, um, the, the, okay, Ola says why the vocabulary in the back? The reason why is because when in the back, um, then what you, they have, they don't know what it is. They, they don't know who they are yet. They have to figure it out. They have to say, they have to ask questions. Am I big? Am I little? Do I live in the jungle? They can ask do questions as well. Um, and it's a great way to review how to ask questions as well. If you are doing this as an icebreaker, one of the twists that we have is we tape, um, we tape cards, a deck of cards, a king, a queen, a jack. And what we do is we treat people, we tell the other people, treat them the way that they are. Uh, treat them, so a queen, a queen or a king you might bow to. And then we talk about how it feels. Um, you can use this as a citizenship or a character development type of exercise where you say, did you feel very good being just uh, just being the joker? Did you feel really, how did you feel? Um, how did you know you were the king or the queen? How did they treat you? And so this is one of the options you can do if you want to make it an icebreaker. You can make it for a maze of sequencing. So here, I got a lot of these ideas from Pinterest. I love what, I used to work with two-year-olds in Germany, and when I was, I, there was no research really um, online, and, and I needed something fast. I needed to figure out how to work with two-year-olds and teach them English. And the way that I found out how to do this was from reading blogs by mothers or seeing uh, different types of things that mothers collected. This is much easier now because you can go to Pinterest, and a lot of moms give ideas and activities. They 
to do with their kids. And moms, they don't have a lot of um, time. They don't have a lot of um, materials. They have to use what's at home. So they have tons of masking tape ideas and activities. Here, they have created a maze with their child. And what you do is on the different points, you write down uh, different words. You can, you can write down bus stop, and you can have the child colored in. They basically, at each point of the path, think of them writing down. Um, if you look at it, these are actually have written. They have bus stop. They have hospital. They have fire station. They have the grocery store. So then you can use sequencing events, and you can teach prepositions, and you can also teach decoration. So when I think um, a direction, so you can ask your, your child, or you can ask a bunch of young learners, you get them to have little cars, and they can go in this huge maze, and you can say, OK, uh, drive right, drive left. It could lead to somewhere. You can have, OK, we need to find our home. We need to drive. To drop the kids off at the bus stops, OK? You can make, so there's different things that you can do with these different types of stops. The great thing about masking tape is you can just tape over. So if you want to change the stop, all you have to do is piece of masking tape and tape it right over. And then afterwards, you can take it off. I don't know if I would necessarily do it with Flora. She might have some kind of staining on there or something. Um, um, usually, I find with the basic carpet, it's not going to ruin it. Um, a lot of times, I've been in conferences, and you can't do that. Um, it, it makes it really good to ma have a maze for sequency. OK, turn right, turn left. Um, they can do, um, OK, go to the, you can call them one by one. You can have them in a circle around this big maze. And then you can call them one by one. OK, Tommy, um, I need you to get to the fire station. I'm going to give you directions, and then you can, um, you, can, you can follow those directions. See if you can follow my directions. So then I can say something like, uh, turn. And, and what you can do at this point is you can put a masking tape to hide the, the, stop, hide the stop so they don't know what it is. You can say, OK, Tommy, make a right. Go straight. Oh, you got to stop at the stop sign. Make a left. Yield. So, I mean, these are the directions. And then you can get Tommy to uh, the backing the safe as well. Yes, exactly. So Peggy says um, that you can, if you don't leave it too long, then it doesn't leave a mark and it comes off easily. So you can do something like that quite easily. You can create a theme. Now, I got this from jamiekettyslessonstream.org. It's one of my absolute favorite lessons. So what you do is, uh, before your students even come into the class, you put a print of a body. You don't have to do all the fill-in. Here is the fill-in. And then you put the desk around. And then you ask them questions. Is this person dead? Um, and then uh, that would be one. In this particular one, he's not dead. He's actually, um, this person is, is uh, just hurt. They're drunk and they're packed out. And they have to create the story or the scene that comes with that. So they paste it together. Or they say, OK, well, why? how did this person get here? If this person is, it could be a mystery. How did that person die? Who, you know, and then you can even feed them pieces of the story. Well, there was a knife involved. Oh, well, there was poison involved. Oh, there was. So you can have them. Um, you can point to different students and say, OK, you get to decide the, the, the weapon of how this person got sick. You get to decide. You can point to another student and say, you get to decide who it was. And then we ask them questions. Then you ask them questions. They decide, but you ask them questions to guess how that person got sick. So it's a great way to have them critical think, um, to put piece of story together. You can record this. And then you can, you can actually go afterwards, and someone can write down the, the story. You can even have someone you designate as the reporter who is writing down the facts of the story. This person gives this. Um, the scene where it happened, this person gives the weapon, this person says who uh, the victim is, this person talks about um, who the, uh, the criminal, this one talks, you know, so you can give all these 
and then this person writes down the story, and then you can even afterwards you can um, put it on line, and you can do something um, visual about it. You can have them act a scene out. You can have them do um, a pow wow, uh, a pow tune, an animodo, uh, a video of it. I mean, there's so many different things you can follow up and do with it afterwards. Then you can have a talk if it is something about drunk. Um, on on lesson stream, if you go and you find this lesson plan, then one of the things that they do is they actually have a um, they talk about drunk driving and they talk about uh, why it's important um, to to you know the, the the dangers of it, and then they talk about their experiences. So I think it's a really good valuable type of lesson. Um, you can do it for fishing. So um, and one of the things that I got this from NoTimeForFlashcards.com. Although I use this activity with my flashcards, I put a lot of flashcards down. And what I've gotten my young learners to do, I taught um, two to ten year olds as well in Germany. And so what we put in a stick, a string, and then you put the masking tape at the bottom of the string, and then I have them fish for something. So after we've reviewed vocabulary, then that's one of the things that we do. I say, okay, you got to fish for um, clothes that I would wear in winter. Um, animals that you would find in the North Pole or you would find in warm climates. Um, animals that hibernate, animals who have fur, um, parents, um, you know, you can add different categories and that's what makes it. Um, for studying math, um, add it for uh, numbers that can't be divided. Um, added for numbers that can be divided by two uh, and have a whole number. I mean, so there's different things, integers, non-integers. I mean, there's so many things you can do for geometric shapes. I mean, so you put a whole bunch of uh, flashcards. I do with flashcards because usually they have a laminate. And, and what I can do is then I can have them review the flashcards. But then I don't have to constantly be making these little fish. I can just have the set of flashcards they usually use that has the a laminate over and they can just fish for it. Um, I can put a but I can make a bunch of different sticks and I can have it to where they work in partners. So I can I can do a bunch of these and have a bunch of flashcards in different areas around the room. They go to their stations and then they pick up the flashcards and they organize them. I don't do that, so that can save you time. You can have little stations of this, and then you can even have the students pick from a deck of cards categories of how they're supposed to do that. So their partner would be sitting over here, and the partner would pick up the category and say, okay, you have to fish for, and then when they catch the fish, they put them on the side. And then that way you can go and you can look at their stack and you can make sure that they, that they did get this right. And make sure they have the card category next to it. So when they finish with all the fish, um, or they finish after 30 seconds or a minute, whatever time frame you do, then you can go back and then you can have them, okay, what categories did you get from your card? And then they come back in and they, um, so uh, Peggy has a great uh, question. What if they catch the wrong fish? Do they have to throw it back in? You can let them know that ahead of time um, because that way they know, that way you know um, that they didn't do this, that that accident didn't happen. So that's a really great question. Yes, give them the option to throw the fish back in or throw that card back in as well. Um, and then afterwards, you can talk as a circle. Okay, what did your pairs come up with? Um, and then they can read their category. Oh, well, we got relatives. And these are the fish that we put, we caught for relatives. Um, another group might get numbers, and then they can talk about that. And then we all learn from each other. Yes, exactly. Uh, so Peggy says, make sure they know the rules before the game starts. And that is very important. <laughs> you can sequence story events. So let's say you don't have a felt board. I think felt boards are great. Um, they take a lot of time to make, though. And having felt clothes um, is also very time consuming. So if you get big masking tape, one of the things I used to do is called um, Let's Dress Hildago. And what we would do is instead we would put pieces of masking tape and each one we would draw something. So I would draw, for example, a mouth or a mustache. Okay, so I'm going to draw a mustache here. So this would be my mustache and this would be there. Then I would draw another one with eyes. And that would be my eyes. And then I put these across. 
their one app. And so what I do is I they the students can draw their own, and then I say, okay, we have to give them eyes. Where would you put his eyes? Well, okay, Hidalgo has to dress for winter. What would you dress him? for winter with, and then they come up, they take the masking tape, they draw, and then they put it somewhere. Oh, Hidalgo needs a, a hat. Where would we put hat? Yeah, exactly. Maria says we could give a description. Almond-shaped eyes. Hidalgo is, and so I always use a character and use. Oh, Hidalgo has a pet. His, uh, if it's a girl, girls are great because then you can study accessories. Oh, she's going out for a date. Um, she needs to dress. Uh, very nice, put her necklace. And so it's a great way to assess very basic vocabulary. Um, you can also do sequencing story events. So, for example, the hungry caterpillar. Um, you can say, okay, what was the first thing the hungry caterpillar ate? And then they can draw it and they can put it up there with the masking tape. So they can, okay, we just read the three little pigs. What was the first house that we had? So you can even have in the middle a house, and then they can take the masking tape and they can draw characteristics of that house. What was it made of? Who blew it down? And then they can put the answers all around it. Um, because um, So you can even do this on your white screen as well. Um, what happened first? What was the first pig like who came in the story? Um, okay, the three little bears. What Goldilocks came upon first. What happened? What was the second one? And so they can, there's so many different possibilities of what you can do and you can have them take colored pencil, I mean, um, they can take uh, colored pencils. You got to watch out with marker. That is one of the things. You can, you can make sure that um, um, they don't get it on themselves because sometimes it's easy to get on yourself. Um, so these are some of the things that they can do. And the great thing is if they get it wrong, and, and you want them to revise it, then you can have them take the tape and then they put it somewhere else. So you can say, did that really happen first? And then one of the friends can have help them with it and then they can change their um, answer a bit. Are we sure it was really red or blue? So these are things. Um, this was a great activity I love. So with the sight words, you actually put the masking tape on little, they put it on spiders and it's a spider web. So what you do is you have the student jump to the right vocabulary word. So you put these along different paths, um, and then they can jump along it. So your students, you can say, OK, um, find uh, what 2 plus 2 would be. And so if this one is 4, then they can go there. 2 times, uh, uh, two times um, 10 divided by 10. So you can review numbers that way. You can review um, a lot of different things. Uh, what is the chemical compound of water? Um, so H2O, they could jump. I mean, so there's a lot of different things that um, you can do with this to review. And the reason why I'm taking those out is because it's up to you to decide. Um, and, and that's one of the things about teaching is that you take your activity, whatever subject material that you teach, and then that becomes the vocabulary word. So you can do this with reviewing lots of different materials. Um, the great thing is that you get your students to move around. Um, and then you can always des designate one to actually the web as well. Um, you can do something where they follow directions. So you can put like different types of, um, you can designate areas around the room. Um, what I do is I actually put them in the corners. And so I have the square, the circle, any of those. Um, and then I throw the cards or whatever there. But then they can run. So we gather in the middle and I say, OK, run to the area. Um, you can even do this as a clue game. You can say, OK, run to the billard or uh, run to um, go collect. You can have them collect things as well. Um, you can have them, OK, go collect um, squares. Or you can go, how, go collect. A, uh, we're very, very hungry, and we need to prepare for um, the winter or a zombie apocalypse. We need non-perishable items that will last us for years and years while we hide out. Uh, while we hide out, um, go collect, and you can have them scattered around. You can say, "Okay, go collect items that are non-perishable," and then you can have them come back, and they can go collect something from. Um, I mean, you, can, you that'll keep this warm. Uh, so you can do different scenarios where they go and they, they run and they collect different things like that as well. And they can talk about them. Oh, why did you pick a can of beans? Do you think you would want to, you know, be, uh, why did you collect um, 
Why did you collect a blanket? Uh, why did you collect? <laughs> so there's different things that you can have them um, collect as well, and then they can talk about it. They can they can talk about why they made their choices. And I think that's what makes it a higher level activity. Is you just don't get them to find out and drill, but uh, one of the components is you have to have that extra conversation added and the justification. Um, I like this, racetrack prepositions. So these are some of the kind of different ways that they do some of the same activities. So you can make them as beautiful as you want. You can make them as elaborate as you want. Um, you can have the kids help you so they can make this very elaborate. One of the things with this racing track that I like is that you can tell them to go fast. You can tell them to go slow. You can say, um, and this is more, I think, for little kids as well. You can say, go visit the lake. Go um, park in the parking lot. I want you to park in the third space, the third lane. And so it's great to practice prepositions. Go over the overpass. Uh, I mean, go under the overpass. Go over the bridge. Um, these are things that you can do with this kind of thing. You can add different props as well. Um, and then kids, they love these kind of activities as well. Um, you can make, OK, so this, this one you can do for a little bit older as well. Um, this is the best type of uh, picture that I could find for this particular activity, but you can do it where they can have a masking tape zoo. And so what they do is that they, you can make lines across the wall of your room, um, or you can do it in your white screen because masking tape for a short period of time on white screen is good. And then what is you give them, you have them work in Paris, and they are, um, that's their designated area for their, we're going to have a class zoo. And they have to come up with the, um, they have to research the habitat. They have to research um, what kind of food that the animal likes. And then they're responsible for creating that um, environment and stuff um, on their zoo. Now, you can have them use dry erase markers to do that. You can have it to where they can add different types of, um, of I mean, it's up to you. So they could do construction paper. They could just do it solely on tape and color the tape. I mean, it's up to you, but it's the way they learn about animals and habitat. And then we go as a class, and we visit the different parts of the zoo. Um, and then they get to, they report to us. They present to us. Oh, this is the animal. You're the zookeeper. Who, what animal did you have? And how do you take care of this animal? And tell us some interesting facts about your animal. So it's a, um, you can do big activities with masking tape. Um, you can do line activities as well. So when you do the line activities, you can just have it to where they start and they race. Um, you can do a word wall. That's one of the things that we're running out of time, so I'm kind of going through this fast now. A word wall is very easy. And see how they um, they have the word wall. They have this throughout the year. They did it with blue. And then each day, um, students add different words and vocabulary that they had it with. You can make the word wall really beautiful. You can make it into a tree. You can make it into a cognitive map. And every single day that they learn a new vocabulary word, you could have another student responsible for put it, posting those vocabulary words each day. And by the end of the year, you can go back and you can review them. If you use wax paper, it makes it very easy to punch a hole with, um, if you put wax paper underneath, you can uh, punch holes uh, with the masking tape, uh, because sometimes it gets sticky and stuff. So that way you can take care of that sticky part. There's another thing you can do with masking, uh, with wax paper and masking tape type of combo. Um, with this kind of things, why do you want to do that? Well, the reason why you would want to do that is because they could do masking tape poetry. It's a cheap for a cheaper version of your magnetic poetry. So the students can, um, you can have them at the beginning. They can add all the words. You can say, OK, um, add, I need you to uh, write down three prepositions, three nouns, uh, five, um, five verbs. And, and then you mix this all apart, and then they post it all up and one area, and then each one of them can come, and they can they can put up different types of words together to make a story, to make a, a poetry, uh, and things like that. You do it for a chain story, so you can have one of the students they can write on it, so they can write on the map. It makes it easier if, if it's on um, a flat surface, but they can write the beginnings of a story. So instead, what they do because what happens when you tell a chain story is that at you don't have the word. So what can you do is um, you can have uh, you can have the masking tape. They write down 
one person gathers and they write down the first part of the story. Once upon a time. And then the second person, um, then they can post it on the wall. The second person runs up with theirs. Um, there was, and then so you keep adding and adding to the story. At the end, you have the whole story. You can take a picture of it, put it on your Instagram account. Um, they don't ever know. I mean, there's so many different things. You can take a picture of it. You can post a picture of what they just wrote, uh, and they can they can make it um, come to life in a story bird. Um, they could put in a zoo burst. I mean, there's so many different things you can do with that. Um, you can create sentence jumbles for their peers, so you can have them work in pairs, and then they come up with um, word jumbles, letter jumbles, sentence jumbles, and they pass on to their peers. Uh, they can even put this on wooden desks, and so they're, they can switch desks, and then they can go and they can try to match that jumble. So they're going from desk to desk trying to take um, do these jumbles. That's a way to get them to come. Um, you can decorate your room with it. Um, you can see all the beautiful types of masking tape that there is. Lines, dots. I mean, they come in all, all kinds of nice. You can find it at a craft store. So if you go to a local craft store, sometimes you can find it at the dollar or one euro or one lira kind of stores as well. You can make a huge class calendar. This is one of my favorite things to do. You put it up in one wall. And every single month, you can have your students go and they can tape up their birthdays. They can tape up, you can have, of course, your tests. Um, but they can tape up their soccer games. They can tape up their, um, or their football games. They can tape up their, uh, yeah, you can do deadlines, things like that. But it's a massive class calendar. It's a way, it's always there. So they can't give an excuse that they forgot. Uh, because it's always there when their projects are due, when their presentations are coming up. So it's a really nice way um, to dedicate and have your whole class be involved with this calendar. And you can make it very colorful. And it takes up one part of your wall as well. So with masking tape, um, it's a Always change the numbers. You can have your students go, and they can you can make them responsible. Where every single month they can go, and they'll um, they're responsible for putting up the numbers of that calendars. You can have caption contests, so you can have it to where you can have a nice picture, and then you just do this. It's very simple. You put a bubble around it with the masking tape, and then they go up, and then they have to add the captions. Um, it could be a great to um, have them be very creative. You can do this with the character. So for example, let's say you're teaching something like Twilight um, or whatever characters you have, then you can have them up there. You can have it be uh, Abraham Lincoln. It doesn't matter. You put the character, you put the setting around, the picture up, and then you can have them, um, you can post that picture on the whiteboard, and then you put the bubble, and you can say, okay, what do you think he's, he's saying here in this particular thing. Uh, okay, so, so Edward uh, just saw the baby, uh, Bella's baby. What do you, his first words when he said this? And you have him think about the characters. You have him really jump into the character's position. What do you think that Elizabeth Benning was thinking when she saw Mr. Darcy? And instead, you put little bubbles instead. What was going through her head? Uh, what was happening when uh, Dr. Frankenstein first saw his creation? Um, so you have them really think about what the characters were thinking. And they jump in fun um, as well. Um, you can have it to where there's more than one as well. You can put two bubbles. And then what you can do is you can have them do role plays that way. Um, and then they have to jump into the character. Okay, you're a businessman. Um, you are selling something. You're selling something, a car. Okay, a used car. And this is uh, a lady. You you are the lady the car for your family. It's your brand new car. Okay, and then they can have conversations back and forth. Um, you're on a first date. Uh, what well, you know? What what are you thinking? What do you think the guy is thinking? So you can do different things like that. So we've come to the end, and you can find all of these activities if you go to the pearl tree. Um, you can find little pearls, and then you can um, add them. Um, let me go ahead and put that for you, um, so you'll be able to do that. Oh, Peggy already did it. Thank you, Peggy. You're awesome. 
Um, you can also download your certificates, and you can find all the bookmarks if you go to the bit.elty link address there. I'll put it inside the chat box. You can copy this chat box as well. I hope this helped you. There's tons and tons of activities that you can do with masking tape. It'll save you in a lot of areas. So if you need to stall time or anything like that, something goes wrong, you can have discussions, you can have debates. Um, there's so many different things you can do. So I, I really hope that you enjoyed this and um, you can copy the chat as well. And thank you very much for showing up. And next week we are going to do one. Um, we're going to talk about apps um, that are on different devices and also um, icebreakers and stuff to do with drawing and coloring um, and also websites. So if you don't have a mobile device, it's OK. You can do it on the website. There's a lot of ways that a lot of different free tools and activities for coloring um, and things that you can do. So thank you so much. And we will see you uh, next week. Let me go ahead and uh, end the recording.